Well, hello, She Lovelies. This is Ida Led McVicker here with you. I'm the founder of She Loves, and I am here with Leah Abraham. Um, so today we have a big announcement to make, and this is some exciting news. And um, Leah is going to be taking on, or has already actually taken on, uh, the role as editor in chief of SheLovesMagazine.com. So our whole editorial segment, all the website element of She Loves has been um, in the capable hands of Leah for the last few months as she was finding her feet and uh, figuring things out and as we were walking together and learning the steps. And, and today, I really wanted us to have a conversation so you can hear Leah's heart, you can see who this amazing woman is, um, and just hear a little bit more of the story behind this decision. So in 2018, I was at Evolving Faith and uh, Sandra Van Opstal was preaching. And I remember she was talking about this whole laying down of power and what needs to happen in order for change to happen in the world. And one of the things she said is like, if you run a nonprofit or if you're a head of an organization, it is time for you to bring other people along. And basically she said, decolonize. And I remember, and, and this whole idea of surrendering power. And, um, and I remember sitting there, I'm like, oh dear, that's me. We have an organization. Oh dear. <laughs> and I remember this kind of hitting me. Um, and then I realized that this is the thing that needs to be done. And so um, it took several more months. Um, we went to, uh, we had a Sheila's leadership retreat in 2019. I didn't really say anything to the team about this realization in my heart and in my spirit um, at that time at Evolving Faith. But that weekend, I remember the word that was reverberating through the whole weekend was this word decolonize. And so um, one of the things that we've been thinking about and talking about is how do we, as a movement, how do we decolonize? And so one of the things we do this is we get the white women out of the way of making decisions <laughs> about what needs to be published and what needs to be um, on the editorial side. But not just that, it, it's also just walking in relationship, right? And so I've known Leah for a very long time. And um, this is not just a decision that is made lightly, it's been done over a long time. Um, Leah has, um, when I started thinking about who could take on this position, I talked to several people in my world and there were two people I trust who I didn't say anything and they said, what about Leah? And I was like, that's the person who's been on my heart. I don't think you even know this, Leah. I don't think I told okay. you that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, you know, all these things. And it was just like, and then of course I had to ask Leah and she had to think about it and just decide if this is something she could take on. Um, and so really um, it's been a process since last summer that we've walked in. Um, and um, now we're making the announcement. And so I'm proud to announce that Leah Abraham is our editor in chief of shelovesmagazine.com. <laughs> So Leah, um, why don't you tell people a little bit about your story and how did you get to this place? Yeah. I know, big, big question. Yeah. <laughs> story. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I guess my story starts in Houston, Texas, um, where I was born. Uh, my family had been there for a few years prior. Um, and when I was three years old, my parents decided that they wanted to move back to India, where they were from, because they wanted my brother and I to grow up knowing our culture, to knowing our language and our history and our heritage. Um, they wanted us to sort of, they wanted us to have that deeply rooted in us and not something that we kept searching for in the future. And so they made the really hard decision to move back um, uproot their lives and move back to India. So that's where I grew up when I was three years old when that happened. So like all my memories and all, everything I can remember all starts back in India. Um, and I was there until I was 13 years old when we decided to move back. Um, and this time we moved to Portland, Oregon in the Northwest um, where I grew up. And it was, I like to say that I, cause people always ask me what that transition was like when you're 13. Um, and I like to say that I did the mistake of watching Mean Girls too much because I thought like you'd move back to high school and people were going to be like that and catty. But I was really lucky because we lived in a neighborhood where there were a lot of 
Asian um, and first generation immigrants. Um, and so someone like me and my story was very normal and very natural, right? Um, and so I quickly found home, found a church, found community. Um, I went to college a little outside Portland um, and I studied journalism there. Um, and those four years were good, but there was also the first time, because the college was on a smaller side and it was uh, fair, very white. Like I was maybe one of two or three Indians at the school. And so it was the first time I was like, oh, so this is what, like, this is kind of the America I grew up hearing about of people not really knowing what to do with a person of color, not knowing, um, not being aware of microaggressions and um, their own biases and um, not realizing the privilege of someone's color of skin or whatever it may be. Um, and so, <laughs> this is like one of my cats, DJ. Um, my dog is lying by my, if you're hearing any kind of interesting noises from my side, it's my dog's lying by my feet. So there we go. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but it was still a good, I think it was like just the first time I realized what it meant to be a person of color in this country. Um, and soon after I graduated, I started working at a newspaper in Seattle for a couple years and then most recently I got married last year I guess um, and I moved to the south after that uh, so I live in Virginia right now um, and it's just interesting trying to figure out what it means to be an immigrant and what it means to be a person of color in this country um, and then moving to the south where um, they like I think it's still taught in schools that the American Civil War was based on states' rights and not racism, right? Um, and so the kinds of people that I'm meeting and the kinds of conversations and I, the community I live in, right? Like it's so different from the Pacific Northwest to the South of America. And it's, um, I think it's just shaping my understanding of the idea about the effects of colonization and the generational effects and the curse and but also the resilience and the blessing that comes with communities that are oppressed and communities of color and immigrant communities. And so I feel, yeah, so it's just, it's an interesting, it was just an interesting time when you asked me of whether I could take this on. Cause I remember that leadership meeting and how it was just so obvious and so evident that this was where us as a, like we were sort of kind of hitting a wall and it was like, what to make, take the next step is to we have to address, we have to name it first and then learn to embody it, right? And so it's just like a lot of these journeys sort of collided at the same time, like me getting ready to get married and like those conversations and me moving here when you asked me, it was like, yeah. So kind of in a snapshot, that's a little bit of right. my story. Yeah. I find it so interesting. Thank you for sharing that. I, like from mean girls to she loves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, kind of this, this idea of what it even means to be a woman in the world or yeah. in North America, right? But yeah. I don't think it's just North American. Um, but then the kind of community that we are trying to create, right? Yeah. To be a community of women who love, of people who love. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just who embody that feminine spirit on the earth and yeah, God's heart, right? So yeah, I just, <laughs> I think it's funny, a little bit funny, right? <laughs> um, but also beautiful. And so I remember when we first met, I was trying to remember the date. Do you remember the year it was? First time, it should have been 2011 or 2012. Okay. Well, it was, it was at a justice conference in Portland. And so, um, yeah, it was, we, we, a few of us went down, um, to the justice conference in Portland and then we decided, well, Tina was writing the, the column, uh, TJIF and Tina Francis Mutungu was writing the column at the time. And I remember we were just talking, well, maybe there's a few people who follow She Loves in Portland. And so we we're like, well, let's put it out there and uh, see if anybody would come to a brunch. It was so exciting. Yeah. So, I, just, I just remember meeting you that day and you were like uh, with some of your friends there. 
Oh gosh, I remember. It was my first year of college and I was I started reading She Loves Cuz of Tina. Um, cause we had met at a conference and, and just started following her work and fell in love with it. Um, and I fell in love with the community and I read every day and kind of, it felt like I was fangirling over a lot of these people. And then like to meet everybody in person. I remember I was sitting next to Kelly Nikandea and I was just like, she's sitting right there and talking theology right now. Like, <laughs> what is this life? Um, this is so awesome. And now to like be working with everybody side by side, it's, yeah, it's surreal to like, yeah, I remember the community just just reading, um, and it painted a picture of like what sisterhood could look like. Right, it was something I didn't have at that time, right. and like especially I don't I don't, I only have a brother, and so I did not necessarily know what sisterhood meant. That mm-hmm. special bond that some sisters could um, some sisters have. Like I was like. Um, and I think it also breeds sort of, it teaches you the sacred feminine, right? The sacred feminine energy that lives and heals. Yeah. Um, and so I think reading it as a high school student, like helped me dare to imagine what community could look like yeah. Um, yeah. and that it's possible. Like what that, it just sort of, I didn't realize that hunger was in me until I met the community. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, yeah. So we're coming up on 10 years in May 20, 2020. Um, so that's kind of exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even believe we've been around for so long, right? It's like, what? And it actually feels like it's been only like two years, maybe. In some ways, it feels like so long. In some ways, it's like, it's just happened like that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we've been under renovation for a while. Um, and so we've got some things, you know, percolating and all that. But we'll, we'll, we'll slowly unfold those as the year comes. Um, are there any ideas that you'd be willing to share kind of with the community of what's on your heart for She Loves or for the editorial side of She Loves? Yeah, well, we have sort of last year, we just decided to like reduce the amount of times we're publishing, um, from about two times a week at the moment, um, mostly because we want to figure out how to develop evergreen content, right? And I think that was something that was also in your heart about instead of just churning out content after content. Can we go deeper with just um, what we're putting out there? Um, And so this year, I think hopefully um, we are able to keep telling our stories, but also figure out how to weave that in with resources, like practical things um, for people in the journey with us of what it's good to be inspired, but how do we take that to the next step? How can we embody what we're learning? Mm-hmm. How can we put that into action? Um, and so part of that is also to maybe figure out where we are in terms of to name our community as a we are a decolonized community now. What did that mean? What could that look like? So trying to figure that out, but also kind of, I think my kind of, I hope, our writers and our storytellers are able to really play around with their craft and like practice wonder um, and try new things. So um, we're trying a couple new series. I think Erin Thomas is coming out with, she has this whole curricular idea of like a queer content. And I'm really excited for, um, maybe talking, I think we're try- thinking of doing a series on white women talking about whiteness. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and some, uh, the Red Couch book club is like, I'm really excited what Annie is doing with them and what she has in store for this year. And so, so I think we're really looking deep to see where our roots are, but also maybe trying out new stuff and having fun with it. So those are the two things that I've been kind of holding dear in my heart and hoping and praying over our writers that they're able to do those two things. And I love that. I love that we have this heavy word of decolonize, but Mm. you've brought also this other word called play. I was Mm. like, those two words are perfect together, right? Mm. I just, because sometimes we just think of this, this sort of this hard, heavy work and then it's, but it's like, unless we also bring in the play, right like we have to it has to be this full body full 
person experience, right? So I just, yeah. when you said play the first time we talked about it, I was like, oh, of course, of course. That's, that just makes so much sense for me with, with the word decolonize, right? So I just, I really appreciate the fresh insight you bring. Just, I, I appreciate who you bring as your whole, like the whole person that you are. Um, the wisdom you bring, your experience, uh, your education, um, and just your ideas too, right? And then, yeah, it's been, ever, and every person I've worked with, that we, I've walked with over the past few years, we've, that you've been the editor for, because you've been an editor for a while as well. People just love, love you as an editor. So um, it's been exciting for me to see how you've, you know, just sit with, the, with you know, how you sat with this idea of, okay, what do we do? And like start moving the wheels and just um, finding your, finding your place in this. And I'm, I'm excited to see where this is going. So yeah, we've, um, <clears throat> the fact that you're doing this means it also allows me to do moving to some other things with us as a movement. Um, and so that's really exciting too. It's giving me some time. I was like, oh, I don't have to do the daily things of the editorial side. Um, so I really appreciate that. And I, so I think that's exciting for our, for our community, for our movement. Um, and just the stuff where we want to go. Um, always seeking Jesus, um, uh, seeking, loving Jesus, seeking justice, and living juicy. <laughs> right? We're still trying to do that. And in a context of empowered women uh, who want to who wanna be kind of liberated and find our, you know, be liberated women, liberated people, right? Live as liberated people on this earth. So, yeah. So I'm excited. Um, very, thank you so much for, um, was there anything else you wanted to add? Anything you haven't touched on tonight? I don't think so. I can't think of anything at the moment. Okay. Well, maybe I will pray for us. Then. Is okay. that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, just... Because this is an ex this is a threshold. It feels like so, yeah. And I always like to <laughs> pray. Um, okay, God, God of the universe, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this moment in this new chapter on she loves. Thank you for how you birthed us, how you've walked with us, how you've grown us, how you've guided us, how you've directed us. Um, and just how you've loved us. Help us to love each other so well and so beautifully that others are also inspired by that. Help us to love ourselves in a way that inspires others. Um, and that spills over into the world, God. Um, as we walk in wholeness and fullness and seeking justice, um, and seeking you and to live full and whole and embodied lives. Just Lord, let your hand be on she loves and on every person who's watching this. Let your will be done and let your love go out to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Leah. Thank you. Let me continue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, She Lovelies. We will see you and we'll catch more of you. Bye.